Solving General Chemistry Problems Thermodynamics As you continue on with your chemistry education, you will come to see how reactions are commonly grouped together and given group identifying names. Sometimes you will find they are given the names of the inventors while other names try to describe the reactions. One of the most important class of named reactions are the formation reactions. Interestingly, while these reactions are among the most important ones we have, many of them do not actually occur in real life. They are important, however, in that they provide the means of tabulating important thermodynamic information about every substance. They are at the foundation of practical thermodynamics. Formation is the name given to a reaction that produces a given substance in a specific phase from the appropriate elements in their standard states. For example, consider calcium carbonate in the solid phase. By looking at the substance, you can see that it's made up of the elements calcium, carbon, and oxygen. We can write down a formation reaction as calcium solid plus carbon solid plus 3 halves O2 gas goes to calcium carbonate solid. A typical question in general chemistry will require you to write down a formation reaction equation when given a substance at its specified phase. Here are some more examples. Write down the equation for the formation of hydrochloric acid in the gas phase. Think about it for a second. Here's the correct answer. Did you get it right? Note the phases of each species involved. Another one is the formation of hydrobromic acid, HBr, in the gas phase. What does that look like? Did you get this one right? Note how the phase of the bromine is given as a liquid, while the chlorine above was a gas. Why the difference? And the related reaction for the formation of hydroiodic acid, HI, again in the gas phase. There, did you get this one right? This time the iodine was given as being in the solid phase, though it is still written as I2. Clearly we need to know something about the standard states of the elements to proceed with this formation work. To be able to write down formation equations, we need to know the standard states of constituent elements. A substance's standard state is a reference state that allows us to calculate its thermodynamic properties under different conditions. The reference state can be chosen arbitrarily, but it is most helpful if all chemists could agree on the same standard state so that their calculations with each other would be easier. IUPAC, the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, recommends a set of standard states that are widely accepted. Interestingly, temperature is not part of the definition. However, things do, however, depend upon temperature, so it must be specified, but we can find a standard state for a substance at any and all temperatures. Most commonly, the temperature of 298.15 Kelvin or 25 degrees Celsius is the temperature used for most tables. A substance's reference state is its most stable form at a pressure of 10 to the 5 pascals or 1 bar. If it is a gas, its reference state is that of behaving as an ideal gas. If a solution, its reference state is that of behaving as an ideal solution. Some choose 1 molal and others 1 molar. Just note that which is being used in each case. If it is a liquid, then its reference state is itself. If it is a solid, it is the particular crystalline form that is the most stable under these conditions. All substances have a reference state, but in general chemistry, you are usually asked to memorize the standard states of the elements. For elements, some are monatomic gases. These are the noble gases, helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon. Some are diatomic. These are hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and chlorine. For liquids, there are only two liquid elements at 298.15 Kelvin, bromine and mercury. Note that bromine is a liquid, and it is also diatomic. Everything else in the periodic table is a solid, and we can list their states such as lithium solid, beryllium solid, gold solid, and so forth. But there are a number of solids which present some special cases worth memorizing. Solids generally exist in several different crystalline forms. These are called allotropes. The bonding is arranged differently and many properties are different, but they are all just the pure elemental atoms in the substance. 
One of the allotropes for each element is the most stable and is the reference state for that solid element. One important case is that of carbon. We can find pure carbon either as graphite or diamond or Buckminster fullerene. But of these, the most stable form is graphite at 298.15 Kelvin. You may sometimes see it as written as carbon solid and sometimes as carbon GR, where the GR refers to graphite. Both mean the same thing. Tin has two allotropes called alpha tin and beta tin. Beta tin is the most stable allotrope, it's also known as white tin, and is its reference state. Though if we consider processes at much lower temperatures, alpha tin would become the reference state as it becomes more stable. But at 298.15 Kelvin, it is beta tin. Sulfur is perhaps the most complex solid element. It has some 30 known allotropes. At 298.15 Kelvin, it is a yellow solid known as alpha sulfur. It is made up of eight sulfur atoms formed into a ring with 16 rings crystallizing into the orthorhombic lattice of the alpha sulfur unit cell. The same material is sometimes called octosulfur or cyclo S8. In any case, some people will write its reference state as S sulfur or solid and meaning it's uh, this alpha sulfur. Others may write S8 solid and mean the same thing. You can use either one, you just need to work out the stoichiometry differently in each case. But this is the most stable form of sulfur at room temperature. Phosphorus is similarly exceptional as it too has many allotropes. The standard state is chosen by convention to be the alpha phase of white phosphorus, even though it is not the most stable phase. This is the one major exception to the rule. Red phosphorus is more stable, but it is more difficult to characterize. White phosphorus consists of a collection of P4 molecules bonded in a tetrahedron and several tetrahedrons crystallized into a body-centered cubic structure. Therefore, the standard state is commonly written as P4 solid and is referring to this white phosphorus phase. Iodine crystallizes in the solid phase as I2 molecules and takes on an orthorhombic crystal structure. It has a high vapor pressure at room temperature, so a vial with solid iodine in it will soon fill with a purple colored gas, which is I2 gas phase molecules. But the most stable phase at room temperature is I2 solid. If you can remember the monatomic and diatomic gases, some of these special solid phase allotropes, and the two liquids bromine and mercury, then you can readily write down formation reactions. Here's another example. Sarin is a potent nerve gas, and here is its chemical structure. Write down the formation reaction for this substance. Now the first thing you need to do is to write down its chemical formula. Go through and count the number of each atom. You should conclude that its formula is C4H10O2PF. Then take what you've learned about the reference state at 298.15 Kelvin for each of the elements and write it out with the correct stoichiometric coefficient so that it provides the correct number of atoms for each element. And don't forget the phase. This is an important component of the answer and it makes a difference in thermodynamics. So you should be able to write down 4 carbon solid plus 5 H2 gas plus O2 gas plus a quarter P4 solid plus a half F2 gas gives C4H10O2PF liquid. While we call this a formation equation, sarin would never be produced by the reaction implied by this equation. This has nothing to do with its synthesis. Rather, it provides the basis for understanding its thermodynamic properties. One final note about notation. Because formation reactions are used throughout thermodynamics, a special subscript is added to most properties to indicate that they relate to that type of reaction. IUPAC recommends that things like reaction enthalpy of formation be denoted with an F subscript after the delta. This would replace the R for reaction. Previously, scientists would place an F after the H. Both are understood and recognized, but the F after the delta is the recommended practice. This applies, of course, to all thermodynamic properties and not just enthalpy.